Hello guys, this is Max Titan 15 bringing you our first episode of my new series which is Let's Play Don't Starve. Now this is quite an unusual game, it's uh, not sort of the type that I play normally but it's uh, very interesting uh, even so and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I wanted to show you guys it. Now I know this may be a little bit weird because I said that I was going to bring you series such as uh, Guild Wars 2, Rift and hopefully the console games but if you watched our last episode you'll see that I mentioned that it may take a while for those series to start because I need to get new recording software because I want to bring you guys sort of the best videos I can and sort of the most high quality so for that I need better recording equipment and especially for the consoles I need to, pro uh, I need to buy sort of better recording devices uh, but don't worry that will be happening uh, possibly in the future but don't worry, it will happen pretty soon. But anyway, uh, don't starve. Let's just start our new series. As you can see, I played a little bit beforehand, only a tiny bit, because that's like on day two and this on day three or something. Because I, I died beforehand. Actually, no, let's just delete these. Because I don't really need them now. But anyway, uh, w let me just walk you through the sort of character customization. No, not customization, selection screen. Now, here we have all the characters that you can play in this game. As you can see, some are blacked out because you have to unlock them. And you unlock each character through uh, gaining XP. And it's sort of it's a weird way of gaining XP in this game. You don't gain it as you actually play. Um, when you die, depending on how many days you've survived, that and then adds up to um, experience. And as you can see, uh, then you'd unlock further characters. Um, I believe there, there are five other characters that I need to unlock and I've unlocked three so there are eight in total I believe uh, and uh, I've only played a little bit I died once uh, and that's why I've unlocked these two because I made it to day 13 I believe uh, and then I just got killed by some random monster it was kind of a uh, kind of weird but uh, anyway l let me just introduce you to our three uh, characters here that I've unlocked this is Wilson he's the gentleman scientist uh, and he each character has a special ability as you'll see down here in this uh, grey box it shows the special abilities that each character has. This one uh, can grow a magnificent beard. Now, this you can sort of shave off, and you get these sort of beard uh, resources, and these are extremely useful later on for creating certain items which are quite important in the game. And it's quite a useful ability, actually, considering beards are quite hard to come across in the wilderness, to be honest. Uh, and then you have the fire starter, Willow, and she is immune to fire damage and starts fires in dark. Now, this is a very, well, very, like, um, important ability uh, and very very useful as well because if you're at night time if you're in the dark and you have no light sources you will just get attacked by random monsters you won't see them you'll literally just like something like half your health will be gone and you'll be like dying and everything will be it's really really uh, extreme but she if she's near any objects she'll light them on fire uh, but obviously that will cost her insanity and her sanity will decrease quite a lot but it's quite a useful ability nonetheless and now this is Wolfgang now he's the strongman and he's, I've noticed he's quite a good character for those who would start out in the game because as you can see he's sort of just sort of brute character, he's got higher health, a bigger stomach and he hits harder. And those are quite useful abilities in the game for starters because obviously if you have higher health you're not going to die so quickly from if you're attacking something. And that of course uh, is backed up by he, the fact that he hits harder so he'll be able to kill monsters quicker so that's quite useful in a way and also he has a bigger stomach so he won't starve so quickly but also then that uh, has downside that you have to feed him more often I believe but uh, anyway I'm not quite sure which uh, character to go for I mean Wolfgang looks a bit weird and I don't really want to go with a fat guy a, fr a fat Frenchman nothing not that I have anything against the French just uh, I'd rather not but uh, here we have like Wilson he does quite a sort of interesting character but so is Willow to be honest but um I know. I think we'll just go with Wilson, considering the whole sort of game is based around him, and there's actually sort of supposedly a storyline behind it. But anyway, we shall go ahead and start our world. Now, um, as I've probably mentioned before, this game is pretty unusual. It's not like the sort of game I've played before. It's sort of, I'd say it was about simulation game. Probably it's, it's probably a simulation game, yeah, uh, with a bit of sort of strategy thrown in. Uh, now, when this game actually starts, there is a cutscene, so I will just let you watch that, guys. Uh, I will w let you watch it in sort of peace and quiet. But uh, anyway, yeah, it's quite different to anything I've seen before. But here we go. And here we are in the world of Don't Starve. As you saw, that guy said that we need to find some uh, 
food before night comes. Uh, so that we, well, don't starve, to be honest. Now, you're probably wondering who he is. I believe, I'm not entirely sure about this, but I believe he is a, um, a demon that has convinced you, to, well, not really convinced you, but tricked you into coming into this realm, and now you're stuck alone, and you have to find a way out. And that's basically the whole sort of, um, uh, theme or aim of the game, to be honest. But that's sort of very, very basic uh, aim of the game, to be honest. Now, as you see, we're just going to run around and collect these sort of natural resources, all these twigs. Uh, but sort of in the in the first day, it's sort of quite simple. I mean, you literally just run around and you grab all these different items. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot available to you. So literally, like on the first day, you literally just sort of, sort of a uh, hunting fest for all these pieces of food and all these resources and these are very very important as you can see these are seeds and later on they'll become increasingly important so definitely whenever you see them I highly recommend you like literally just drop whatever you're doing and just run and get them because they're like a lifeline when it comes to the winter which is a very key uh, which is a key aspect to this game now uh, I'll actually explain a little bit about that winter I believe lasts something like 15 days and it's basically just you can literally like freeze to death uh, during the worst parts of winter uh, if you if you're not prepared and you don't have the right clothing or you're not by a fire or something like that uh, you literally just freeze to death which I think is also quite realistic considering if you're in the wild you're literally just gonna die of cold um, but yeah it's definitely the most challenging aspect of this game and to sort of counteract that you need to have sort of steady food supply and I believe you can do it uh, in two ways one is grow your own, wow what is this, okay well we'll come back to this later because I'll explain this later but uh, one is sort of build your own uh, farms which then grow your own foods but in the winter they will grow more slowly uh, or the other is as you've probably seen as we're running around there are all these rabbits around here uh, and the main uh, aim is sort of just to capture as many of those possible and just kill them and get their meat and stuff like that now um, that is one thing I'm going to talk about uh, in the winter as I mentioned the food grows, I believe, much more slowly, or not at all, like wild food, wild berries. I believe they either don't grow at all, or they like grow really, really slowly, so that's why you need the rabbits. But uh, anyway, the rabbits are sort of a very key food source in this game, as they provide you with meat, and meat basically just is like the godsend in this game. It's like literally just like amazing, and it'll like give you everything you need to survive, in a way, I guess. Or in terms of your hunger, sanity is a different matter anyway. Oh, uh, oh, and here we go, some seeds. No, don't you dare. That's kind of an annoying thing. Uh, that has happened way too many times. I've seen, like, you know, seeds, which are just, like, the Lord divine in this game. And there will be a bird there, and the bird will eat it and then fly off like a bloody bastard. He'll just, like, mock him. He'll mock you as he flies away. Uh, but actually, this is kind of bad, actually. We're coming up to almost evening here. Uh, actually, that is one thing I should explain in a minute. Ah, oh, here we go. Wow, this is perfect. Actually, this is more than perfect. This is brilliant. Okay, now this is the mother load. So right now, we are going to create this pickaxe and a normal axe. But this pickaxe, we are going to use to mine these because the, there are stone, uh, like, I'm not sure what you call them, to be honest. Just the, like, mining nodes around where you can mine off stones and rocks and nitro off them. Um, oh, we've gone into evening. But whereas these are sort of gold, you can tell by the gold streaks through them, and they give you gold. And gold are extremely useful for building machines uh, and building main structures that you will need to survive out here in the world of Don't Starve. And this is actually kind of amazing to be honest, to find this much stone, this much flint, and this much gold in the first episode, or the first sort of day in fact. Like I've never done this before, every time I've played it's always been like a real struggle to find gold. So like right now I think... We can oh, almost build a science machine actually there, yeah, that reminds me, we now need uh, firewood for, um, for for a campfire tonight. Uh, but let me just quickly explain this sort of um, icon up here. Now as you'll see it's split into three sections, you have the yellow section, the red section, the blue section. Uh, the yellow section is th your daytime and that will like slowly decrease in the winter so literally like days will become shorter as they do in real life. Um, and then it'll become longer in the uh, summer but then the red period that we're in right now is evening and that's all just like a warning um, about that night time's coming and you have to get prepared and you have to get a campfire ready uh, 
and then of course the blue section is night time when everything goes dark and literally if you, if you are out at night uh, in the dark and you um you have no light source like look at this hit the bloody bastard turn off his light yeah well exactly yeah pig house there are pig men around here it's pretty cool as you will have seen back there we will go and investigate that later on but right now i just want to collect as many resources as we can right now but um, as I was saying, if you don't have a light source in the night, you will literally just be attacked by random monsters. Uh, you won't even see them. You'll literally just you'll just lose half your health, and you'll be like dying, and it's terrible. Uh, that happened to me once before. I almost died. I didn't though. I managed to get to my camp at the time, but it was like horrible and it was really really freaky to be honest. Um, anyway, where shall we go? I think we, we'll just probably set up our our campfire because we do have enough for a fire pit but we, but we but we haven't found a suitable place to put it because that is one major thing that you have to consider in this game uh your fire pit all oh, seeds we will quickly grab and that right now and, and as i just accidentally did there i turned the camera you can do that using the q and e buttons uh but uh, anyway as i was going to say we do have enough resources oh not anymore because we need more logs might as well just do that while we're uh while we have the light of the fire but um, you will need a fire pit because these are sort of just temporary uh, fire camps are just temporary uh, and they only last one night whereas the fire pits will last forever so they basically they sort of act as your camp which you can keep coming back to which uh, so that in my opinion you should put all your main machines by so like your science machine so just basically make it sort of your area uh, which is really, really useful but you have to find the right place to put it and my main suggestion would be, so far from my experiences, although they're quite limited, uh, would be to put them near rabbit holes, because during the winter, you will need the food from the rabbits more than you will, like, from farms and stuff, because it will grow more slowly. So, if you have it near rabbit holes, then of course you've got all these resources close by and quite sort of readily available. But right now, I mean, we don't have too much food, we've only got three carrots and four berries, but I will think we will just quickly to eat up these carrots. Yeah, look, we're storing our, our hunger back up to 115 and 150, I believe it is. Yeah, I think it's 150. I will also cook these berries. Not that I think they do much when they're cooked. Roasted berries. Oh, they're actually not that bad. Wow, that's pretty good. I thought they were much worse than that. But as you can see, we're almost coming into day two, which is, uh, which is really, really good. Uh, so far, we have got some stones. I think today we will just go out and collect more fire, uh, more f uh, logs, I mean, uh, for our fire, because we need to build a fire pit. So I think we'll just do that today, and also we'll find a suitable place to uh, to put our fire pit. Then, of course, right now, what do we need for our science machine? We need more logs. Yeah, basically just the main thing is more logs, tons more logs. Now, speaking of chopping, chopping down trees, there is a reason there's kind of like evening. One, of course, it tells you when night time is about to arrive. But two, it also um, tells you, oh, of course, the gods send seeds to turn up. But two, it also, some things spawn more often in the evening. Like, I believe in the evenings, I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on this. But I believe in the evenings there is an actual chance for some sort of tree monster or some guardian of the forest to spawn if you're chopping down a tree uh, at night. So that's why it's probably best to do it in the day. And that's what I sort of mean when I say it's sort of, sort of slightly a strategy game. You have to think ahead and think about what you're doing and what resources you have to get and stuff like that. Which uh, is sort of quite an important part of this game. But uh, anyway, man, I don't really like it when the sort of ground shakes when you chop down a tree. It's quite a quite so unnerving to be honest but uh, anyway uh, now speaking of the game itself uh, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about it and at the start of the episode I believe I mentioned that you are tricked into this realm by that demon and I believe that demon's name is Maxwell I haven't even read up on it I believe this is just what I got from like some trailer um, but basically you are the scientist here and you are tricked by this demon over the radio. I believe it's over the radio. It's some stupid device or something. It's pretty. It's a pretty weird way of getting tricked. But you literally just you hear this voice one day, and it tells you to build this machine. So you do it because you're an idiot. Um, and then it eventually just uh, it turns out to be a portal. And then of course the portal takes you into this Maxwell's realm. Oh wait, oh, it's <laughs> with me. I'm trying to chop down a uh, a tree with a pickaxe. But um, it takes you into this realm, Maxwell's realm. Uh, and now the whole idea is you have to try and escape and to do that um, you have to find well I think there are two ways to do it I think 
you had to either find Maxwell's door, um, which is just basically a portal, which will take you into a uh, special adventure mode, and don't you dare, you stupid thing. There we go. Okay, and also carrots, not to gain carrots. Wow, there's quite a lot of food around here. So I first off need Max. But, um, you'll be taken to adventure mode. And the second is, I believe you have to collect certain items, which will then lead you to the door or something. Uh, and basically in adventure mode, there are five sort of, five trials, which all they do is they increase or decrease some feature about the game, such like there might be more lightning strikes or less food. Uh, and then you have to overcome these sort of trials and uh, find Maxwell's door or find four or five items in each adventure mode. Uh, and then if you do that, you will be transported to Maxwell's realm. Uh, and then eventually you'll confront him. I think that's how you sort of complete the game. I think that's the overall gist of it. That's a really, really basic gist of it. But um, yeah, just sort of thought I'd let you guys know about that. And anyway, how are we doing for logs? Wow, we've got quite a lot. And we've got plenty of pine cones, which I will definitely use tonight as uh, in uh, the placement of firewood to keep the fire going. Now, right now, what do we need? I think we need... We've got plenty of logs. I think we might need some more stone. And we definitely need some more food as well. Also, I might explain just these flowers. Okay, flowers in the game, because you have the sanity bar, uh, and flowers will increase that. And I'll explain to you probably in the next episode what sanity does, because it is quite important. And it's actually quite useful later on in the game to get certain items. But uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for flowers, because you should probably pick them if your sanity is getting low. And also, if you have enough, you can create this. And now this is a garland, and as you can see, you need 12 uh, petals for it, which you get from picking flowers. Uh, we've only got two at the moment. It says something to soothe the nerves, and basically what it does is it, uh, it while wearing it, it just naturally increases your sanity. So it's just basically sort of a cure if you're going insane kind of sort of thing. Which is, it's, it's really, really useful thing to have, uh, but it does go stale. And it, it does go off. As you can see, all these like items here have sort of this green, uh, like hue around them. Now this one, as you can see, is sort of decreasing and that's sort of this uh, level of, might as well eat this now before they go bad, it's sort of this level of sort of um, how preserved it is and it will eventually it will go yellow which means it's going stale and then it will go red and I believe that means it's gone off and then eventually it will just turn to rot uh, which is quite useful in its own way because rot is pretty useful. But um, what are we doing right now? Oh yes, we need to find a suitable place to put our, our fire pit. And now, as I said, try and put it near several rabbit holes. So we can find like sort of a bunch of rabbit holes, and that would be a good idea. And what is flashing? I saw something's flashing over here. Where's my imagination? Did something just flash? Oh, yeah, there is. Oh, what the hell? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Why aren't they attacking me? What the hell? They guys actually attacking me? Oh God! What the hell was that? Well, this was the place where we visited before. Where it's like, what are these? Pig torch. What's their lich? No, what are you doing, you stupid pig? Oh, what the hell? I don't even know what they're doing, to be honest. But, um, yeah, we. Oh, actually, I think this might be a good place to do it. But the only problem is we're near these guys. We may have to kill them off in, in a future episode. But yeah, I think somewhere around here, look, you've got plenty of rabbit holes for the future. Yeah, I think. Actually, yeah, I think right here is a pretty good spot. I mean, we're right by a sort of rose, which probably leads to a new area, which will be really, really useful in the episodes to come. But as you can see, ta-da, this is our fire pit, and it's really, really useful, as says the fire's getting a bit low, so we'll just chuck a couple of pine cones on here, create a really, wow, look at that, that's one rip roaring fire, it's the biggest fire I've ever seen, to be honest, apart from the news, of course, with like, uh, proper forest fires, but I don't think that counts, uh, anyway, I think it's time to build our science machine, and there we go, now, as you can see, the science machine sort of opened up all these extra sort of tabs, within our creation menu uh, and these sort of uh, allow us to create new items and new things and as you can see if it has a light bulb by it it means you could prototype it uh, and as you can see here it says backpack you could prototype and as I said we need to get a backpack but the prototyping I know it sounds pretty weird and complicated but prototyping is actually just basically where you uh, create an item once but you have to be near a science machine or another machine to create it uh, so literally you can't just create it when you're out in the wild and there we go, we have a backpack. But uh, you can't create it when we're when you're out in the wild. And so, uh, but once you create it once, now look, if you go into here, look, like if we walk away, all well, the tabs disappeared, but we can still create a backpack. So it's, it's just quite a useful way, and I just turned the camera around. Wow. Uh, but it was quite a useful thing, uh, so you can just create them in the future. And I think a shovel should we make it? 
Yeah, we'll make a shovel. After all, shovels are extremely useful to us. But also, one other thing we do need to create are, is a chest. Because chests are extremely useful in this game. So, well, here we go. It probably looks like I know what I'm doing, and I'm doing this pretty quickly, but to be honest, I have absolutely not, I'm, no idea what I'm doing here. I'm kind of just doing what I think I should be doing. We'll put those together. And now you can just sort of dump anything you don't really need um, in these. We don't need the seeds for now because we need a farm for those first. Um, pine cones? No, we'll just keep them for tomorrow night when we actually have them. Now, we have the food, but I think our hunger is pretty much okay. Now, um, okay, as we're coming into day three, uh, I think our probably next aim will just be collecting food. Because as you can see, our food supplies are running pretty low here. We've only got one berry and two carrots, which is kind of a shame. Uh, but now, actually, we have this new shovel, and I'll show you what it does. You see all these sort of tufts on the ground? Um, you can now dig them up, and you get what are called uh, grass tufts once the game is loading or oh, saving, which is very nice. Uh, but you get these grass tufts, and these, I am actually not kidding, will literally, when you throw them on the fire, will literally last. If, say, the things at the top here, the arrows at uh, facing north, it will literally last you all the way down to the, when it reaches south. So literally, like half a day, it will reach. Uh, it will last half a day, and so it's just so brilliant. And it will literally just keep uh, the fire on. So literally, like each night, you could throw on one of these tufts, and you literally don't have to worry about a thing. You, you know, you'll just have fire for the rest of the night. It's really, really nice. And also, it's a big rip roaring fire, like the one we had. But the one we had, you had to like throw in like a ton of pine cones. To create. Now I'm just thinking we should possibly travel up this road and into this new area here because we need to get some more food and I think uh, no 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 oh yes we got it. Um, well actually we might as well just put the seed in here considering we're going this way and we don't need to, uh, don't need to carry it, uh, it with us but uh, anyway I think we should follow this road up here because we're now looking for more food and we'll avoid the weird um, pig gathering, it's kind of weird, it's like a druid settlement, mm, man I can't seem to find any food, ah, oh, brilliant, okay here, okay, now we found our first buffalo, now these are extremely important in the game, because they will give you manure, and I know that sounds pretty weird, you know, manure, <laughs> the one thing every survivalist wants and craves, obviously, but um, manure, now manure is going to be useful, oh, I can't really show you right now because I've done the tab, but it is used in creating farms. And farms are like one of the most important like features of the game. Because it will literally just give like an all round all year round supply of um of food. As long as you have seeds. Wow, what is this? I've never seen this before. <laughs> wow, this is pretty cool. Oh, what is this it's like Okay, there's a ring of mushrooms and there's a ring of evil flowers. It can't really be good. Should we pick this up? I mean, I, I do want to be more cautious than I was before. And I'm kind of worried that if I pick it up, something bad is going to happen. Because, I mean, it is in the middle of all these evil flowers. Uh, I know I said I'd be more careful, but to be honest... Run! Oh, I think we're actually fine. Okay, that was kind of weird. I don't know what this is. What is this? Let's examine it. A ring that could focus dimensional energies. And, of course, he, you know, he, he can just see that by looking at a ring. And he knows it could focus the... Uh, dimensional realities of course of course oh actually there is one thing I've forgotten to create and that is a crock pot I know you probably think it where did you get that from dimensional realities but I actually got it from the mushrooms because these mushrooms on their own if you eat them that your sanity will go down so it's quite bad uh, but then if you of course if you have um if you have a crock pot which is basically just a cooking pot where you can chuck in like a ton, a ton of food and it'll come up with a meal so you just chuck in a ton of useless food and it'll come up with a meal, which is really, really useful. Okay, I think that's enough uh, mushrooms for now, because they don't want to be like overloaded. But to make um, a crock pot, we need charcoal. Uh, I can't, once again, I can't show you because it's in the food area. But let us... To be honest, I know it's pretty cool, but I wonder what would happen if we lit... Whoa, whoa, if we lit this on fire. Hello. Wow, man, that guy's gonna die. Well, he should do. No, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just want to get. Wow, that guy's like literally trapped. And wow, <laughs> man, that was cool. Yeah, he's dead. I think he's pretty much dead. If he survived that, I'll be 
just utterly impressed. Because he, he, he would be one, like, the toughest pig ever created. Oh no, don't start attacking me, stupid pig. Wow, okay, I thought he was going to attack me there for a second. That would have been kind of bad, considering... Whoa, they hit hard. Man, we're almost down to half health, guys. Okay, well, not the best start, I guess. Well, but not our best first encounter with these uh, tribal pigs. Because normally you can come across these settlements and they're actually really peaceful and you can actually, um, what the hell, save king. What the, what the hell? Um, but um, you can then, they have like lots of food and you can sort of trade food with them in a way. Because if you give them food, they will literally just follow you around everywhere and you become like their god. It's pretty cool actually. But right now, looking at our health, I think we'll eat these berries. Um, no, I think we'll, we'll leave the seeds for now. But my main concern is getting a, a croc pot. Oh, and I don't think we've got enough rocks either. Where is... Oh, there's no mining nodes anywhere. Wow. Let's just go straight down, I'd say. Because we need mining nodes to create a croc pot. And then we also need um, some trees to burn down. Which is kind of harsh. Oh, no, that's a... Oh, God. I really, I've just noticed it's the evening and we are lighting trees on fire. So if any... If there was any good time for the um, the guardian of the tree to turn up, this would kind of be now. Wow, and I swear I just heard some rumbling. I'm kind of getting worried now. <laughs> I mean, you, you probably think it's pretty stupid getting worried over a game like this, but it's pretty like pretty nerve-wracking at some points because you you never know what's going to happen. To be honest, okay, let's just keep like lighting these random trees on fire because we are such a nice person. We love we love lighting trees on fire. Okay, there we go. Oh, we'll collect this flint while we're here, because that's very important uh, in its own way. Oh, berries. We do need food after all. Oh, and carrots, wow. Wow, wow. This could not have come at a better time for me. Look at that, we're at 35 out of 100. What the... the hell? Those things always freak me out. But um, we are 34 now out of 150. Not the best, to be honest. And after all, the aim of the game is not to starve. Whew. Um, well, I think we'll just collect all this charcoal and then head back to our base very, very quickly because it's basically nighttime crap. Oh man, can we actually make it in time? We may have to use our torch. Yeah, we're going to have to use our torch for that. Which is okay, I mean, that's the reason the torch is there, to be honest. And oh yeah, yeah, see, it's nighttime now. And if we didn't have this torch, we would literally just be dead right now. But as you can see, the torch is like, thing is decreasing quite a lot. Like, it's already gone down 33%. So you have to be careful when using it, you have to make sure that you're not using it up too much. And look at that, what did I tell you, a rip roaring fire and all we had to use was one grass tuft. Now the food thing, the crock pot, oh god, okay we, we need, yeah we definitely need more um, stone, so I think it will be our aim for uh, day 4, because I mean we've survived up to day 3 and that's not too bad, I mean I think that's pretty good in itself, but to be honest I think right now we are going to have to wrap it up. I say. Yeah, I think that was a good time to wrap up this episode. I mean, we've done quite a lot, to be honest. Um, I just think about it. Could we make a... S yeah. Let's just quickly make a rope so we're all prepared for, no for uh, next episode. But, um, yeah, I think in the next episode we will have to quickly wait. Oh, God. I think I'm literally going to die of starvation. It's not too good. Um, so, quickly before I uh, end this episode, I think I will have these tasty carrots so Wilson doesn't die but uh, anyway uh, I think this is a good time as any to wrap up the episode so I guess all there is to say is I hope you're having a great week wherever you are in the world um, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I hope to see you next time in our future episodes and our future series that don't worry I will be doing uh, but yeah anyway um, I hope to see you next time I will see you then and bye bye